day, people are up for themselves. Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Belko experiment. I'm so behind in movie reviews, so I apologize for that. I was gonna do a cure for wellness before it went out of theaters, but I'm a little late on that. So hopefully I can do this one before it goes out of theaters because I know you guys really want my opinion. So firstly, I'm just gonna say, if you're considering seeing the Belko experiment, experiment in theaters, just wait, just hold on to your money and spend it on a $1, $2 rental at Redbox or whatever you do to watch movies, I don't know. Because it was honestly probably the most disappointing movie that I've seen in the past year. It was not what I thought it was going to be. Based on the trailers, I was so excited for this movie. It looked really original. I mean, the, the concept itself has been done before, but the idea of the building and everything like that uh, seemed original the acting seemed really good because it had big actors in it you know Fitz from Scandal Hello and I definitely don't think it's a horror by any means I'm still reviewing it but it's more of a suspense like thriller action movie for sure which a few of my criticisms come in there but I'm not gonna spoil anything for you guys I'll wait until the end of the video to do spoilers and I will warn you but my first big criticism well first okay let me just give you a backstory of the plot so it's about this Belco company and it's set in South America and these people are hired on and they go through this extensive process, but they're given a car, I believe. They are given an apartment and, you know, just they have a little chip inside the back of their head so they can like keep track of them. One day they're at work. I don't even know what they do. It's just something random. I don't know. And the someone comes over to the loudspeaker, which is in the trailer. You can see that and says if 30 of you are not dead by so-and-so, then we will kill 60 of you. And so right off the bat, things get a little polarized between the people, which, you know, you can expect when there's some, like a crisis, there's gonna be leaders and followers, and then there's going to be survivalists and hiders. Personally, I would be a hider. I would have found the best hiding spot in the whole place and just hid there, and if they blew up my head, then it was, that's just what was gonna happen anyway. I'd rather them do that than someone try to kill me because if they blow up my head, it's automatic, it's instant, it's not someone like stabbing me to death, you know? Anyway, that would have been my plan, so I was kind of upset that only one person was a hider out of everyone in the building. There was like 80 people. So my first big criticism is the amount of people. I thought for some reason it didn't seem like a lot in the trailer when they were like, if 30 of you are not dead, then we will kill 60 of you. That didn't seem like that much. I don't know, it just didn't seem like it was gonna be too much, but no, it was if they had knocked off like half of the people initially, like if they just started with 30 people, it would have made so much more of an impact when people actually died because you're not keeping track of people by any means. And there's so many characters that they tried to make main characters or at least you know, B characters, like, you know, there's, they're on the side, but there's still like people that you know in the movie and then are supposed to be sad if they die, but you're really not because there's not a lot of backstory to any of these people. They didn't spend a lot of time on it. I think the security guard happened to be my favorite character in the movie because we got more of his personality and I just felt for him more than anybody else. Everyone else was just kind of boring and like tropes in movies in my opinion. So that was the biggest thing is that there was just way too many people and way too many deaths that it was like, it was just so much. I feel like they just wanted to jam pack as many deaths as possible to be like extreme. I don't know. A lot of people are comparing this movie to Battle Royale, which if you don't know what that is, you need to watch it. That's I think the first Japanese film I've ever watched and I love it. And I could totally see the resemblance between Battle Royale and like, you know, a fight to the death. It's a competition, only one can survive kind of thing. There is a scene that I, well, there's a lot of scenes I didn't like. One of the scenes I did not like is when there's a protagonist and an antagonist and they have a fight. And it's one of the most cheesy, stereotypical movie fights I have ever seen in any movie. It's like, you know, throwing punches. Of course, the antagonist gets on top of the protagonist and he's like strangling him instead of punching him in the face. I don't know why he would just strangle him when there's something out of reach and he's like trying to reach for it. You know, it's one of those things and oh, protagonist gets away. So it's just like one of those battles that's so annoying. It's like one of these people is army trained to kill people. One is not. Why is this guy stand like being equal to this one in fighting? I don't know, it didn't seem realistic. I mean, none of this seems realistic in my opinion, but that specifically, I just hate those kind of cheesy fight scenes. Like it's, they're put in there for the action people who want the action, 
but for people who like the suspense and horror side of things, it's just annoying. So I'm going to get into spoilers and kind of talk about the end of the film because it's a big part of the movie and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the ending so I will give it credit for that but overall I rate this movie like a 6 out of 10. It was not fantastic. It was entertaining. The gore was really good. Like I felt so disturbed at points. Um, to where I was like, I can't look at this. They do, they do a lot of face bashing, which I don't do. I don't do head smashing, face bashing. I don't, I can't do skulls being crushed. None of that. They had a lot of that. Okay, I guess I can do it, but it's like, I can't watch it, which means it's effective on me. The gore works, you know? Basically, I liked that there was those aspects because it was disturbing to me, but I'm morbid and weird in that way that I like to see things that I personally don't like in movies. I don't know. Anyway, there was a lot of gore. If you're not into gore, don't watch this movie. Okay, now onto spoilers. If you have not seen it and don't want to know the ending, you know, stop watching, but honestly, it's probably not going to ruin anything for you. I mean, it is kind of a twist at the end, but me... I don't know. I don't think you need to necessarily go in without knowing. I will say part of the fun is thinking, okay, who's going to survive? Because you know only one person will survive towards the end and it's like, which one is it going to be? And you're like thinking it's, you know, this one and then this one. You think you know, but then you don't. So if you don't want to know who survives, then turn off this video now. Well, one, okay, first let me just say my favorite scene of the whole movie, it happens at the beginning of the film actually, it's kind of a spoiler, so I don't want to say it because it honestly shocked me and it was very effective on me and I kind of want you guys to go into it without knowing it. So hopefully if you haven't seen it you don't watch or if you just don't care keep watch I don't know anyway so there's a scene where it has like the two janitor guys not janitor they're like repairman electricians kind of and one's older one's younger and it seems like they have like a this like relationship and like friendship bond thing so they're sticking together in this situation and then all of a sudden one of them the younger one kind of snaps it's like this weird back and forth battle between the two and that one, the young one, hits him in the face with a wrench. This is the scene that really messed me up. It wasn't gory necessarily, but the man like turns around or spins around and he's like, he has this huge dent in the, in his face, <laughs> just like a dent. And it's, oh my God, you're like, how is he still alive? And he says, wait, what just happened? And that's when I was like, nope, mm -mm, I'm done. I can't. He's talking normal. He doesn't know what happened. Like, mm. that's so disturbing to me that he like, doesn't realize what happened. And afterwards, right after that, he dies. But it's like for a split second, like brain injuries are just weird to me. Like obviously I'm into psychology. And so brain injuries are honestly the scariest things to me because the brain is so weird and we don't know much about it. So for him to like have a huge dent and he doesn't know what happened, he can't remember because something in his mind is messed up. It was, it was really cool. Like it was cool, but it was really sad and really disturbing. You find out at the end of the movie, of course, that one of these people, only one of these people are gonna live and you find out it's the protagonist, surprise. I kind of wanted it to be hiding girl because she made it to the very end and she was getting her kills up there and basically whoever had the most kills was going to be the survivor. Some people automatically were like, you know, they're not gonna, win. And so of course the protagonist wins. He walks out or he's guided out and he gets into this room and he sees like the creator of the game and some like people and he you know starts messing with the board, blows it up so everyone dies. Um, he, I think there's a scene where or like a split second where he's contemplating pulling his own like you know trigger or whatever to blow his head up which I thought was a really powerful scene. It was very small but I liked that. And then you realize he walks out and there's a camera on him and it pans out and it's a bigger game than what you think it is. The last scene is basically all the survivors from these different games around the world. And so it's alluding to the fact of, you know, there's going to be a second Belko experiment probably between the survivors. I mean, I'm guessing, but I, I'm pretty sure they're going to make another one. Honestly, like I said, save your money and not see it in theaters. It was very disappointing from what I had expected from it. I did have kind of high expectations because the actors that were in it and the plot, I didn't realize that it was very shallow. Like a lot of the characters, the storyline, everything like that was very shallow. We didn't get a lot of details or depth and I feel like if they cut the amount of people that was in the building in half, we would have had that depth and been able to maybe bond with the characters more or 
care more about their deaths when they did die. You know, it was just, it was too shallow for me. It was very like The Purge in the sense it was action-y and kind of suspenseful when you were trying to figure out who was gonna live and die. But beyond that, it wasn't very plot heavy or good in other ways. So those are all my thoughts on the Belko experiment. Leave your commentary down below and make sure to leave some more requests down below. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.